Hello. So, I got asked not just how do you use Unity events, but what are Unity events useful for? And I thought, okay, there's a fundamental missing. I need to teach people about scriptable functionality. Because if you can't see what Unity events are useful for, then you probably don't understand scriptable functionality. And that's not a, that's not a big thing. It's something that doesn't come up very often, except in game development. And even in game development, you may not have heard of it until you're fairly fairly far along the, the course. Um, but either way, teaching it is fairly straightforward, and understanding it is very, very important. So I'm going to teach you scriptable functionality, and I'm, you're going to learn how to use Unity events along the way. So I've got myself a little airlock. Each of these airlock doors has a script attached to it, but the script is empty. I've also got two buttons, open the door and close the door. But the, the buttons do nothing. You're going to have to live with this scaling error. I'm not sure what's causing it, but I'm too lazy to fix it for a prototype like this. Uh, so the doors start closed and they stay closed. How do we make it so that these actually open the doors? Well, down here is a Unity event. This is what I'm teaching you. It's a button, and the buttons automatically come with a Unity event that gets triggered when you click the button. We can add in a new function. Let's go ahead and tell it to target the glass door, and uh, here in the animator we can use set trigger open. Now, the biggest flaw with Unity events at the moment is that they can take a maximum of one argument. Now, that's not entirely true. You can force them to take multiple arguments using some serious uh, uh, code digging, but assuming you're not going to go into the guts of Unity, you can take one argument, which means you can't use any of the things like set bool, which takes two arguments, the bool you want to set and the value you want to set it to. You can use set trigger, however, and the triggers are smart, so uh, generally that works. And of course on close, same thing, but we want to close the door. And I've already got that set up here in the animator. I've got an open trigger and a closed trigger. I don't know what this is. This can go away. But, uh, you know, this is all just based on very simple triggering systems. So when I tell it to open the door, it opens it. And when I tell it to close the door, it closes it. And the triggers are fairly smart, so you don't have to worry about that um, screwing up. Seems to work great. That's pretty um, uninteresting. So let's go ahead and go down to these glass doors, and let's go ahead and add in some actual functionality. So in order to do that, we're going to play with animation events. Animation events are very similar to, um, uh, to Unity events, and uh, they're used in many of the same situations. So here in Close the Door, we're actually going to go ahead and create another animation event here at the end, another, our first one here at the end. It lets you select what you're going to trigger, but we don't have any triggers worth um, selecting. So we have to build ourselves a trigger. Here is our functional door. It is empty. I've added in the Unity Events framework, but I haven't actually used any of it, the namespace. So let's go ahead and create a function, public void um, close animation played. And you could actually go ahead and give it whatever you'd like. You don't have to name it something long like that. We're also going to go ahead and create a Unity event. And uh, we're going to call this onClose. And here, we're going to say onClose.invoke. So just so you're aware, when close animation played gets called, we trigger the onClose Unity event. It's very straightforward. Let's go back into our animation function here, and let's pick it. Close animation played. So what I've just done is I've added in a little node at the end of the animation where if you get to the end of the animation, it triggers that function, which in turn triggers the Unity event. It would be nice if this actually let me directly trigger Unity events, but that's okay, we'll live with it. And you notice that that Unity event just popped up over here on close. Yeah, it's the Unity event, event we just created. So what do we want this to do? Let's go ahead and, ahead and have it open the other door. Like so. It is an airlock, after all. So one of the things you will note is that the instant we hit play, 
it's going to actually trigger because the close animation is what is on by default. So, bonk. So this closed by default and then this opened. Pretty straightforward. And now if we hit open Z door and close Z door, it can't get it to do anything. But we can go ahead and wire it up the other way. We can switch over to the open Z door animation and we can pull in the same details but in the opposite direction. There we go. So we've just done the exact same thing, and you can see that there's now an on open. Let's have it close. Oh, sorry, wrong button. Let's have it close the other door. Oh, I don't know. I didn't mean to hit save there. That's fine. Open the door. Clunk. Close the door. Clunk. Open the door. Clunk. Close the door. Now, why is this impressive? Well, this is impressive because these two doors have the exact same script. They have the exact same functions. They have the exact same animations. But they do entirely different things. This door does not open or close that door. This door and that door are only related by Unity events. This door does nothing. Whether it opens or closes, it doesn't care. Let's go ahead and make it do something. Let's go ahead and say that when we close, what we would like to do is we would like to change the color of the sun. I don't see any option to change the color of the sun. Darn. Mm. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to turn it off. So that turns it off, and then down here we want to turn it back on, so... Hit play. So, just to reiterate, these are the exact same door. They have the exact same six lines of code. They are identical in every way. But because we are using Unity events, we can script an interaction. We can say, this door should do something once it is opened. That door should do something once it is closed. And what do we want it to do? Well, maybe we want it to open another door. Maybe we want it to change the amount of power that's available. Maybe we want to spawn a cutscene. Maybe we want to change to another scene. Um, there are an infinite number of things you can do with this because it's scriptable functionality. We say When we hit save, these get saved. And that's unlike normal event systems. So if you're going to be considering a normal event system in Unity, the problem with normal events is they don't serialize properly, and you've got to keep setting them up over and over and over, which means that you can't do this. You can't just give this to, to a developer. You can't say, I know that you're just a level designer, and you don't have a lot of coding experience, but I need you to code absolutely everything you're going to be doing. Instead, you say, I know you're just a level designer, so here's a whole bunch of events. Do you know how to click the plus button and choose another object and pick a function. And they'll say, yes, of course. And you say, then you're all set. You can build all sorts of mazes and complex interactions. You can make pit traps. You can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, and all you have to do is surface it with this Unity event system. That's what you use Unity events for. So if you have a game that needs a tutorial or has complex levels, Unity events are great because you can use all of the same objects and they can do completely different things because what they do is stored right down here rather than in here. So that's how you use it. That's why it's powerful. And uh, I also showed you the animation events because they get integrated in more often than not. And I hope you learned. And if not, then I hope you already knew it and it wasn't me just failing to teach. <laughs>